What's going on guys, Rudy here, and today I'm gonna show you how to do the output routing for Fairview inside of the digital audio workspace Reaper. Uh, for me, Reaper is kind of my secondary DAW. I'm primarily a Pro Tools user, um, but I do like Reaper a lot and I'd actually like to learn it even better. All of this is to say uh, that there might be some advanced Reaper users out there that could do this even more efficiently than me, but I do know how to do it, so at the very least, I'll be able to get you up and running. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. The first thing we want to do is add an instrument track. So we're going to go up here to track, uh, insert virtual instrument on new track. We're going to select contact. Now this window is going to pop up. Um, there is an option where inside of Reaper you can basically route everything to multiple outputs automatically. It'll add a bunch more tracks. Uh, it is my experience that this doesn't always work properly, so we're going to go ahead and click No for now. And here in the plugin window, we see that we have contact loaded up. First thing we want to do is go up to these little boxes, and we want to click Outputs. And this is going to be the default output configuration uh, for Fairview and just contact in general. Um, but regardless of what it looks like down there, we're going to go ahead and click on this plus sign before we even drag Fairview in. So. There are 14 total outputs that you can do inside of Fairview and Contact. So we're going to add quantity of tracks, 14. Number of channels, 2. We want them all to be stereo, so that's good. Host output, you want to click whatever is first in the list here. This drop-down menu might look a little bit different for everybody. Ascending output assignment, we do want that checked. That just means it's adding everything in ascending order. Delete existing channels before creating new ones. I am going to check that as well and make this your default configuration. You can check that if you want. It'll basically just save this output setting. So whenever you open contact, uh, it'll just default to that from now on. I'm going to leave that unchecked. And you can always change it again later. But for now, I'm just going to leave it unchecked. Hit OK. And here you can see that we have uh, 14 stereo tracks going up, 1, 2, all the way to 2728 right here. So now that we have that done, we can go ahead and pull Fairview in. Let's let that load up for a second. All right, so now that we have Fairview in, uh, we should be able to click on stuff. And as you can see, everything is coming through the first stereo channel, the main outputs. So that's great. However, we want to route everything to individual outputs. Um, so the first thing we want to do here is go over to the main mixer window, come down here, and pull down any one of these drop-down menus. As you can see, you can route them out. You can go ahead and do this manually, but the new function that we've included is this multi-out function. So if you click on this, you'll see that it just routed everything in ascending order, all 14 outputs, uh, 1 to 14 in order. So that's perfect. So now if we go back to the kit, we will see if I click snare, it's coming through too. You see it coming through the uh, couple of the other stereo channels over here in the overheads and rooms, but we're not hearing it. And that's because we haven't routed auxiliary outputs inside of Reaper. Right now it's all just inside of contact. The only thing we should be able to hear right now is the kick because the kick, and that's only the kick close mic because that's coming down one and two. Uh, so that's all fine for now. We're getting signal everywhere we should, but we are just not actually hearing it yet. So now we're gonna go ahead and take this out of the way. And the next thing we're going to do down here, before we do anything else, like I just said, uh, you should be able to hear the kick coming out of one and two. We actually don't even want to be able to hear the kick right now. And this is going to be something you want to do in general. You want to go to this route function on this uh, instrument track. And up here, it says master send channel. You want to unclick that. And that basically means no audio from this is going to be going to the main master fader that default loads up inside of Reaper. Um, so once we've done that, and for the record, basically that makes this particular track like nothing but uh, a controller of sorts. And we're gonna go up here to insert and add multiple tracks. We're gonna add 14 total. And now I'm gonna go ahead and rename these to match stuff up here in Fairview. I'm gonna rename each one, kick, snare, and so on and so forth. Uh, so let me go ahead and rename those, and I might even change the color a bit because I like to have things a certain color. So let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, now we have relabeled everything and I've changed the colors, which kind of soothes my OCD a little bit. Uh, and now we're gonna do the actual routing. So remember, uh, we already turned off the master send here. So we're gonna go to this first channel um, that's not the contact instrument and click on the route button. And we are gonna click on receives. We're gonna select contact. And then in this window here, down below there's another drop down menu. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. Let's go back to the contact track. And it says track channels too. Right now there are only two channels. Uh, and in order to see the rest, we added a total of 28. So you wanna add, you wanna go to 28. And that's actually a really important step. That's basically saying there are that many outputs that can go from this track. Uh, so you need to make sure to add 28 there. Otherwise, when you go back to the kick and you go to the receives, you're not actually gonna see all of these numbers under stereo source. Uh, so you wanna make sure to do that on your main uh, instrument track. But anyway, continuing, we're gonna go to stereo source down this little drop down menu. The first one, stereo source, one, two, that one's already set perfectly. Uh, and the second one is basically just where it's sending it from there, so to the main output. So that all looks great. Let's go ahead and go to snare. Same thing, we're gonna go to receives, contact, which is the first track. But for this one, we're gonna select three, four, and leave the second one, one, two, because we want everything going to the master fader. Uh, let's do one more here. Rack one, going to receives, contact. And for this one, we want five, six. So we're gonna go ahead and continue that all the way down the line, and I'll go ahead and speed up through this. All right, and the very last one, contact, audio, stereo source, 27, 28. So now we have routed every single thing to its own stereo output. For the record, inside of Reaper, uh, there really is no designation between mono and stereo, which as a Pro Tools user is kind of confusing to me, but basically any track can act as either one. So anyway, now when we come back to uh, contact, if we go to kit and we click on snare, we see it in, in the fader and we're also hearing it. We should be hearing everything now. And if I get this window out of the way and you look at the faders here, if I click on snare, snare's coming in, kick's coming in, everything is coming in where it's supposed to. You got all the toms and the shells in general coming in overheads, close rooms, far rooms, etc. And in other words, everything is routed perfectly now. So uh, to really test this out, let's go ahead and go over to the grooves player. I'm also gonna get rid of the outputs window. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just select a random groove and I'm gonna drag it in. There we go, let's get rid of this window. And now if I hit play, we'll be able to actually hear a groove that comes stock with Fairview and uh, you'll be able to see everything coming through the faders. So yeah, it's pretty much that easy. Um, like I said, there very well possibly may be someone that can do the routing faster. There might be some shortcuts or hotkeys. I'm not a super advanced Reaper user, but it's simple enough. You just have to kind of take the time to go through this. Uh, we do have a, a function where you can do it a little bit quicker in Pro Tools, but for Reaper, you just have to manually go through it. Um, but the biggest thing here really is that multi-output um, function that we've added is really helpful and saves a lot of time. So make sure to use that. And uh, yeah, otherwise that is pretty much it. Um, if you're a Reaper user, hopefully you have learned something and have a great day. Peace.